Hello everyone, this is Marco and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be continuing the Hammond Collection reviews and this time we'll be taking a look at the brand new Pyroraptor by Mattel. This is quite an elusive figure right now. For now it just seems to have been released in Japan and some parts of the US. I don't think it's quite meant to be out just yet but thankfully my very good friend Rod has sent this over from Japan for me to do a review on and to just to take a look at. Yes we're talking about the Rod also known as Rod's Random Work the incredibly talented customizer and sculptor that we all know and love. He's actually gone ahead and designed a brand new replacement head for this Pyroraptor even before this figure was released, which is crazy. I want to give him a quick shout out because he deserves it. He's coming up with some really cool projects and I think you should go and follow him. He started sculpting the baby Zilla from the 1998 Godzilla movie, as well as other cool projects. I'll leave a link in the description to his social media accounts. So this figure was revealed some time ago and when we all saw the promotional pictures of the prototype, uh, a lot of people were upset with the paintwork, but I knew back then that it was just an edited picture with the paint apps that they were planning to add. So it was just a Photoshop mock-up of what the final product could have looked like or would have looked like. It looked really badly painted, but it was just a render. So thankfully the final product looks a bit nicer. That being said, it does have its paint flaws, but we'll get to that later. What struck me straight away were some aspects of the sculpt as usual. Although Mattel has applied their brand new philosophy of having smaller feet and sharper teeth, I remember I did a Photoshop edit of how the figure should have looked like already. But I'll dive deep into the sculpting later on in the video. For a bit of context, this figure was revealed alongside the Hammond Collection Delta figure which I believe hasn't been released yet. By the way, I feel like I should probably give everyone a bit of a disclaimer. That's if you're not familiar with my content and my channel and who I am. I review these figures from a professional sculptor's perspective. So a lot of details the general public won't notice, I'll be pointing out. So enough babbling, let's take a look at the packaging, shall we? So because this figure is part of the Hammond Collection line, the packaging is exactly the same as what we see usually. It's got a mainly black design with a render of the figure and the name of the dinosaur that's being portrayed. There's a nice big window in the box so we can see the figure itself with a nice Jurassic World logo. There's the Hammond Collection logos on the side with some more renders of the figure. On the back, there's another render of the figure too with a description and some stickers. As you notice, this packaging comes from Japan. It's got some Japanese writing on it. I can't read it, but I'd like to point out that they added a sticker over the Jurassic World logo up on the corner. The Japanese version has this sticker, so it's got the Japanese title covering up the original Jurassic World one. I find that really fascinating. I'm guessing it's much cheaper to produce a sticker to put on the packaging rather than design a whole new packaging for each country. Enough said about the box, let's move on to reviewing the figure. Let's take it out of the box. The Pyroraptor comes in two separate parts, the main body part and the tail. You'll need to click the tail in place on the back side of the body. Once that's done, we can review the figure now. So first of all, we'll be talking about the sculpt the main shape and proportions of the figure, and then all of the detail. I'm having to record this in separate parts because I keep getting interrupted by seagulls. I don't know what it is this time of the year in this part of the country. They are extremely loud. <laughs> Anyway, back to the Pyroraptor. Proportions wise, it's not bad at all. As you can see, the feet are much smaller than previous Raptor releases. We all know which ones I'm referring to. It's got a really nice long tail, which is accurate. And those are the two main things that Mattel have been fixing on their figures as of late. They've also been making sure that the teeth on the later figures are much sharper too. And we can definitely see that on this Pyroraptor. So again, a very clear example of Mattel listening to their fans and customers and consumers, which is more than any other corporate company has ever done, to be honest. So props to Mattel for listening and a big thank you to the community for bringing all these points up. That being said, this figure does suffer from a very common issue that some Mattel figures have, unfortunately, and that is the very fat hips. 
Mattel sculptors seem to like sculpting things a bit wider than usual, which is not accurate to the film, unfortunately. And we can compare with the Dinosaur Style Guide, a free document available to everyone made by the community as reference. As you can see, the Pyroraptor in the guide is much slimmer than this Mattel version. Some people have their own theory as to why they make their figures so wide, and that is to accommodate some of the articulation features. To be exact, we're talking about the one where the hips sway in and out from the body. I know this can't be the case as they have clearly demonstrated they can sculpt slimmer figures and still incorporate that articulation joint. And that example is with the smaller Carnotaurus figures. But it seems like someone at Mattel really likes Carnotaurus and they always get them right. So unfortunately, the only reasonable conclusion that I can come up with is that they don't look at reference material properly. And that is one of the cardinal sins of any sculptor. Although Mattel shouldn't have these issues as they have access to the ILM models themselves. So they've got plenty of reference to work from. It could be a lack of skill, it could be time constraints, laziness, or maybe the Mattel higher-ups don't pay sculptors enough for them to care as much, which is sadly a very real possibility. Again, I'd like to point out that this is not the end of the world, having wider hips and stuff, but as a designer myself, when creating movie accurate collectible figures, you need to follow the reference material as closely as possible. That is part of your job. Imagine if Hasbro sculpted and released a Marvel Legends figure of Iron Man with really wide childbearing hips. <laughs> I'm pretty sure people will have problems with that. Don't take that too literally, it was just an exaggerated example. But you know what I mean. So this is what the figure should look like from the top, with much slimmer hips. Looking at it from the side view, you can notice that the body itself is a bit too thick still. Some people have referred to it as being a bit pot belly. We see a bit of thickness around that area on blue as well, but it's definitely not as obvious as this one. So that needs to be slimmed down, more in line with the reference material and what we see in the movie. Although the feet are much smaller than previous Raptor releases, they do kind of look a bit fat, a bit blown up. They seem to be very fleshy for some reason. They seem to make the toes on every figure that they do a bit too sausage-like, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But honestly, this isn't a big issue at all. Taking a closer look at the head, you can see that they put a ton of effort in making this thing look as accurate as possible. The shape of the head is spot on from every angle, and this is <laughs> absolutely amazing. I am so incredibly grateful that they did put as much effort as they did with this Pyroraptor. About the teeth, I appreciate the fact that they tried to make them look sharp and everything, and they do look much, much better than any previous release that they did. Unfortunately, the teeth on this figure seem to stop quite abruptly before they should end. I mean that there should be more teeth going towards the back of the mouth. If we imagine a line going down from the eye, the teeth should carry on all the way down to the back of the mouth. Granted, the what we see in this figure is actually more paleontologically accurate, which makes a change. A lot of people think that the Pyroraptor design in the movie is quite ugly, and I have to agree. The teeth on that dinosaur are quite monstrous. Although I do prefer the way they look on this figure rather than in the film, it's still inaccurate, unfortunately. Let's talk about those glass eyes. So, it seems like with these smaller figures, they're painting the pupil on the outside of the eye. This makes it so that the pupil is always visible. But doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose of having glass eyes? The point of a glass eye is for the pupil to be recessed inside so that when you tilt the figure, it looks like the eye is following you. So it looks like they kind of shot themselves in the foot by adding these glass eyes on the smaller figures. They realize that they don't look very good and that they're quite impractical to add on smaller figures. So they decided to just paint that pupil on the outside and just called it a day. So it still doesn't look as good as painted eyes because you can barely see the color of the eye itself. Due to the color being too recessed inside the eye, that causes shadows and make the eye look completely dark and soulless. But at least you can see the pupil now. Mattel has always had issues trying to pull that effect off though. They seem to not understand how to make it work properly. 
They've got the general concept right, but it's just not done correctly. The way to fix this issue is to not have the pupil as recessed as it is. They need to find a middle ground where the eye still follows you, but it's not as deep. Due to manufacturing, I suppose this can be very, very tricky to do. And I can see why they just decided to paint the pupil over the eye. But before saying we can't blame them, we have to remember that they took all these decisions. So if you're bothered at all by this glass eye, I recommend you look into Rod's replacement head if you're interested. Another thing Rod is working on is some extension feathers on the elbow joint. As you can see, there are some missing feathers there and that's due to the articulation, but it could have been designed a bit better. That's why Rod is coming in and designing his own. Another thing I'd like to point out is the curvature of the back. On the reference material, the curvature of the back or the arch of the back is closer to the front of the torso. On this figure, the arch of the back is on the hips, which isn't accurate. If you've watched my Giganotosaurus review, if you haven't, I highly recommend you go and watch that after this video because I talk about the three main steps in the sculpting process. Step one is getting all the proportions and general shapes right. You don't limit yourself at just looking at the reference material from one side only. At this stage, you have to look at every angle possible in order to get it as accurate as possible. Once you move on from this stage, it's quite hard to go back and fix issues. Mattel sculptors seem to struggle a lot with step one and sometimes with step two. So what is step two? During that section, you add all the broader detailing. So in this case, the volume of the feathers, fenestre in the skull, in the snout, the musculature, and in this case, the fatness <laughs> of the toes. But with step three is where Mattel really shines. During this step is when you add all of the finer details, like the scales on the skin, the texture of the feathers, just texture in general. Mattel's Hammond collection figures, at least the most recent ones, have been incredibly crisp and spot on. So I would highly recommend Mattel sculptors to focus on step one and on step two as much as they do with step three. So yes, looking at this Pyroraptor, all the details are absolutely superb. The detail on the face, the sculpting detail on the feathers is just exquisite. Absolutely fabulous work. I think with their most recent work, I have to give them a 10 out of 10 with all the detailing work, man. It's so crisp and spot on and accurate. So the next step is paint work. Now I would like to point out that Mattel pride themselves with these figures as having premium paint applications, as they have stated before. As I implied earlier, the paintwork could be better. The general colors are pretty much correct and much better than that prototype picture that was released some time ago. The whole figure has been pigmented in this dark brown gray color. There's no trace of speckling in the plastic at all, which is very different from other Mattel releases. It has this dark red going down from the back of the head all the way down to the tail. The thighs are painted red too, but the arms are pigmented with this red color. They have added a very faint and subtle dark pink on the snout, which is a very nice touch. The inside of the mouth is painted pink and the teeth are painted with off-white. They've added some grey paint apps on the feathers of the arms, some lighter grey on the tips of the feathers on the tail, and they've added this very odd looking dry brushing on the back and on the back of the tail. I'm guessing they added this dry brushing to kind of make it look and feel a bit more premium than their mainline figures. To me it just comes across as if the red paint has rubbed off. The colour they dry brushed is very similar if not the same as the pigmented colour they used as the base of the figure. So it really does look like the red has been rubbed off. If I was to add some dry brushing on this figure I probably would have chosen a lighter shade of red or maybe some very subtle blue, because the Pyroraptor in the film does have some very, very subtle blue hints on the feathers. Mattel did nail the dry brushing on the Therizinosaur, which I still need to review, by the way. I'll do that as soon as I can. That is a prime example of some very, very nicely done dry brushing on a figure. They painted some claws on the figure, but they did not paint enough. And that is the very bad part of this figure. First of all, none of the toe claws are painted. None of them. On the original prototype, they painted the toe claws with some off-white. Even some black would have worked really well. 
but instead they didn't paint them at all. Mattel saw the darker pigmented plastic as an opportunity to save some money by not painting the claws. And that is just absolutely shameless. But it doesn't stop there. They only painted two of the three claws on each hand and they didn't paint the skin on the hands at all. And that just screams corporate greed. Again, they pride themselves in delivering premium paint apps on these figures, and yet they managed to scrape some paint off to line their pockets and just hope that no one would notice. Also, the Pyroraptor in the film has a lighter stripe going in between the main red color and the darker belly color. So let's add that. And this is what the figure would look like if it was properly painted. I'm just quickly comparing this Power Raptor figure to some of Mattel's earlier work with the Stygi Moloch that was part of the main line, the one dedicated to children. This was released back in 2018 and you can see how many paint apps this Stygi Moloch has. It has the belly color going all the way down to the tail. It's got the belly color on the back of the legs too. The dark pattern goes on the tail and on the thighs too. They painted the claws, they painted every single horn on the face, the dome and everything. It just kind of puts this Pyroraptor figure to shame. The Pyroraptor is supposed to be a premium collector's figure. It just makes you think. The Giganotosaurus, however, has got the best paint apps I have ever seen on a Jurassic figure. So it's kind of crazy how hit and miss these figures are. It is much cheaper to paint a smaller figure, yet they cut corners so much on those. Just wait until you see that Delta figure, because man, they really did cut the paint on that. They did poor Delta dirty there. Anyway, that's enough for the paint section. Let's talk about the joints and the articulation. I've seen some pretty bad quality control issues with the joints. Some people have had problems with the tail joint, as seen in this picture, and some others with the leg joints too. Luckily, my one seems perfect all around. Quality control issues have always been a big problem with Mattel's figures, especially with the Hammond Collection ones, and it just seems to have become worse with time. My Pyroraptor's left thigh does poke out more than the right one, and it makes that joint a bit loose. And the joints in the arms seem really small and delicate. I'm kind of scared of moving that around. As mentioned previously, Rod's random work is adding some feather extensions for the elbow joint so that there isn't that weird big gap there. The joint in the tail is quite loose too. The tail has some nice bendy wire in it. It's made of rubber so when you pose it, the wire bends and it stays in position. I really like that. What's nice though is that they seem to have redesigned the neck articulation from the previous Raptors. All the neck parts seem to be on ball joints, which allow for a much, much better range of motion. The jaw hinge is the same as the other cheap ones used in the Raptors, but it works better in this case because it's positioned further back in the mouth. So that looks really good. And finally, I've heard some people say that they would like to have some articulation in the ankles too. And I think I have to agree. It's not that they can't add joints. They have clearly done that before with the Junior T-Rex or the Infant T-Rex they released previously on the Hammond collection. And it's a very, very similar sized figure. And that is entirely possible. So please Mattel, add some joints in the ankles too. Having talked about the articulation, I think it is time to end the review. My final thoughts is that this figure is pretty solid. It does come with some issues, but overall I'd probably give it a seven or eight out of 10. I really hope Mattel slim down those thighs and really try and focus more on step one and two of the sculpting as well. Although the figure is pretty appealing and they have fixed a lot of issues from their previous releases, which shouldn't have been an issue from the beginning, Mattel still need to work on some aspects. So we talked about how the sculpts can be improved if they focus more on step one and two of the sculpting process. They need to improve the paintwork for these smaller figures. Although the paintwork is nice, it still needs work. They really need to stop cutting corners on these premium figures as they do come across as really cheap looking when they're not painted properly. Next is the articulation. Needs a little bit of work, including the jaw hinge. This time the end result is much better than the previous Raptor releases, but for all we know it could be a fluke. And I still strongly encourage that they use their custom jaw hinges that they implemented on their original mainline Raptors. And finally, the quality control issues. These need to be addressed as soon as possible and I hope Mattel fixes these issues going forward as they seem to be recurring and only getting worse. So guys, Mattel does listen to us. 
They have made some gigantic improvements over the past releases. Let's keep being vocal about what we want and what can be improved, and they will fix it. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I would like to give a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. Seriously guys, your support really does mean the world to me, as it helps me do what I love for you. You help me buy materials, and most of all, you give me a helping hand with improving the quality of the content of my videos. Even if it's just a small donation, every little helps.